Eh, posiblemente anoche llegaron tarde a sus habitaciones. Eh, entonces les agradecemos venir a asistir al taller de la CRC. Eh, muchas gracias a los organizadores, a GSMA7, eh, por la invitación. Estamos eh, como país invitado eh, tratando de traer un, pues, traer un, un taller eh, donde quisimos proponer la idea de qué tenemos que hacer como industria para lograr acomodarnos a esa transformación digital en las economías de nuestros países. Ya lo decían en la apertura eh, los, los, los distintas personas que hicieron su discurso. Recuerdo a Pablo hablando de la colaboración que se necesita entre industria y Estado para avanzar en temas de conectividad y ofrecer eh, servicios digitales. Y también a Raúl Katz presentando el estudio en el cual hablaba de eh, la única manera en la cual como región podemos avanzar, podemos lograr mejorar nuestro crecimiento de nuestra economía es a través de la generar más mayor productividad y esa producti productividad la tenemos que lograr a través de la transformación digital de nuestras economías. Entonces, la idea es eh, una presentación muy corta, en 20-25 minutos, para dejar unos puntos abiertos y ya posteriormente mi colega Germán Darío va a moderar el panel en donde se van a discutir y se van a profundizar un poco más estos aspectos. Eh, ¿Cuáles son entonces esos retos del sector privado y público más allá de la conectividad? Tenemos, en el caso de Colombia, pues una conectividad eh, bastante extendida, si se puede decir así. Tenemos un backbone de fibra óptica que cubre 96% de los municipios. Tenemos, además, una gran cantidad de puntos de conectividad, 7.133 kioscos, 910 puntos vive digital. Tenemos unas zonas Wi-Fi en algunos eh, municipios del país. Eh, y tenemos una red de alta velocidad que conecta municipios en la Orinoquía, Amazonía, en el Pacífico, que son zonas bastante complejas de llegar desde el punto de vista de conectividad y redes. Eh, sin embargo, la conectividad, pues, eh, aunque, aunque la tenemos hasta los puntos, hasta los municipios, las cabeceras municipales, no tenemos la red de acceso. Es otro de los temas que se hablaba el martes. Necesitamos promover ese acceso a los ciudadanos. ¿Cómo, hace, cómo hacemos para llegar con esa conectividad a todos los ciudadanos en el, en el país? Para eso... Para eso entonces, eh, pues, el tema es que avanzar en infraestructura no lo es todo, necesitamos infraestructura obviamente, necesitamos conectar a la ciudadanía, necesitamos que existan esas redes de acceso, pero también necesitamos otro tipo de componentes. En el caso de Colombia, el 98% de los municipios en este momento están conectados con banda ancha, 98% es una gran cantidad, sin embargo, no existen conexiones de banda ancha eh, que se estén utilizando por toda la población. Tenemos... 44.7% de penetración de internet fijo en hogares, que es relativamente bajo comparado con otros países, incluso eh, países de la región. En ese sentido, pues, lo, que, lo que deberíamos trabajar como país, o como países, si, si podemos tomar a Colombia como ejemplo, es eh, trabajar en herramientas para conectar al ciudadano. Cómo logramos a través de la política, la regulación, la inversión del sector privado en conectar a la ciudadanía. We need uh, to connect the, the whole population. We have used different tools in Colombia. We have been using some TV channels to broadcast information about this. We have some frequency. We have uh, the way to use frequency and we give those messages and how to use the radio uh, frequencies to achieve this connectivity. This is working. Uh, there are some companies which are interested in doing this kind of spectrum and to create this connectivity. We are also speaking about solutions in communities, how communities are trying to achieve those specific solutions for centers with high population. Few people have been able to achieve great connectivity and to take uh, the internet to that zone and to that geographic area. So they need more access to find solutions. They need as well to have some meetings with some manufacturers. And in Facebook, they are trying to uh, design some new solutions to have this con uh, community connectivity. Within the regulation area, we have the active and passive uh, partition of networks. And in Colombia, we have an active partition, and we know 
that as regulators is not enough to have three or four networks in the whole country. Probably in more populated areas they have more access, but in rural areas they don't need so much connectivity, so it's not necessary to have three networks working at the same time. So uh, the, the, they put one network, they overlap one network over the other, and then they have the possibility to share this structure, this infrastructure, and all users can access this, and also they favor competition, given that the uh, participation of different factors might be similar. We have some of the tools and we have uh, the possibility to request or operators have the request, the possibility to request with the ministry the way to pay for the use of spectrum, but instead of that they can take that to area where there is no connectivity and cover here and they no cover and they can take these two different zones of the country, which is the purpose of the government, I mean to get with that cover to areas where there is no sign. And uh, there is also some other interconnection uh, access as a virtual, uh, promoting virtual connection or to promote this competition uh, in different areas of the country. The second point is the appropriation. We have been working hard on this point of view, training the population in how to consult the internet, uh, to analyze the usefulness of this tool. And it's important to say also that we need to go from uh, being in an area using uh, the internet to access social networks to get to a point in which they use the internet with more useful purposes for production from the people who work independently and they can use the internet as a tool for their labor system. In the private sector, which is number three, we have been working together to avoid limitations with the restrictions that are imposed in different municipalities or in different territories. And we know this is a problem in the whole region. In many countries, there is a limitation to uh, use this infrastructure and that also banners uh, the connectivity to achieve uh, many people or to have high quality of high capacity in the networks. Joint investment between operators. In the case of Colombia, the second and the third operator, the appropriation, um, the uh, participation of markets decided to share the network in a joint manner and they want to share that infrastructure to deploy the networks looking for efficiency and we're able to see that it's not necessary to go into passive infrastructure partition uh, possibilities in a passive way because the consumers are getting to agreements now to share the infrastructure and to uh, get to those areas. The third point, which is public, public and private alliances uh, related to the possibility of uh, different entities to deploy this infrastructure for the connectivity. So is the case of the uh, optic fiber in Colombia, and this is a public alliance, and a private and public alliance in Colombia, and this is a concession that can offer commercial services to enhance the uh, profitability of this project. As a conclusion, we can say we have the need to say that no way we are able to meet these purposes as a state by itself, as a, the, the, the uh, industry by itself. We have to work together. We need to get into agreements as a country and work uh, jointly to solve these uh, problems and to collaborate to meet the purpose of connectivity and to close a digital gap in our countries. What's happening in industry? We've seen different debates on how the industry is changing and how traditional services are uh, diminishing the relevance into different incomes. 
generated by the operators. This chart, I don't think, think it's properly seen, but in the dark, darker color, it represents a percentage of the incomes for the traditional services, connectivity, a wire or a wireless uh, connectivity. As you see, in the income space, it's increasing year after year. And uh, uh, the, the black portion here is the telecommunications uh, work that represents a lower percentage of the industry. We come from 58% to 45% in the year 2017. And this trend still kept. So voice services represent less and less incomes and in mobile operators. There are some services like mobile, the mobile internet that is increasing, but uh, the industry should drive regulators and operators to take advantage of these incomes that are taking place in our industry. What's the advantage of the operators? Operators know that they have some clients clients which are subscribed. They know the kind of clients they have, the, the kind of the services they use. They know the needs of those clients. And based on that, they can offer some comprehensive solutions adapted to those needs of the clients. Important thing is to focus on which are the needs of uh, these companies' clients. This shows how some operators in the world are changing its incomes and they are replacing that lose between the traditional services with new and digital services, which are taking place in the digital context. There are cases like Japan, Korea, South Korea, Singapore, Germany, France, in which they get up to 15% of the income components of the digital services. Services related to the data analysis, security, some DTI applications for the cooperative clients. And this is included or generated by traditional telecommunication companies because they are going through this transformation to achieve what the clients need. One of these samples might be Turkcell. This year, the Mobile Congress in Barcelona uh, showed some presentations. In the case of mobile data, the income represents 13 uh, percent. Fixed data is 37 percent. But digital services, without new ones offered this by these traditional uh, operators, is 175 percent. And this component is really increasing. And they had to replace the traditional incomes by, uh, on the industry by the services that we are used to use. So another case is AT&T. They offer, they have a different industries for cooperative users. Here we can see how there are specific solutions for specific clients in transportation, education, health, and they can offer some comprehensive solutions for clients they have in those industries. Uh, understand which is the business they develop and what kind of tools they can use in communications to enhance the functioning and business of those specific clients. In the case of Docomo, which is a different uh, case with digital services, what they do, they consider an increase of the income, which is quite significant, by a tool named D-Points, some tools in which the final users of mobile services gain some points, and those points can be used to make some purchases and uh, to achieve some services of to use some services. Those are traditional marketing uh, offers and how this becomes a, a digital service. Uh, 
and for the government in the digital analysis done in Colombia we we published by the end of last year, we have to go analyzing the behavior in different countries to analyze the tools that they are using from the point of view of the promotion of digital connection and how to make this digital solution to be adopted and to be uh, taken forward. In Singapore, there is a public and private uh, connection in which they uh, design all the policies in digital areas. In the case of the UK, Spain, and Mexico, there is a regulatory convergence and there is also a digital agenda focused on those digital services to transform the economy and to transform different economic sectors and take that into digital services. In the U.S., we have a, a regulatory convergence. Each of the entities of the government have some guidelines on how to, this, uh, to do this digital transition. In Colombia, we uh, we say we are innovative, uh, regu regula we have innovative regulations because we start thinking on what to do as re regulators to promote digital agendas and then we have an interest sector uh, commission to achieve the participation of the Minister of Technologies and Information, the Minister of Prevention, Minister of Commerce, the Minister of Education and the Department for Taxes. And, and fees, and there are different services offered in the countries. That intersectors commission is already working. We started about one month uh, working with them, and we, I can say that we are debating in this multi sector commission the definition of which are the methods to take taxes for the platforms and how to pay more in those platforms for services provision through credit cards. It's a very complicated system to be implemented and we are uh, we have a commission in charge of these in topics as for instance services, transportation services in the country they don't have no added value taxes. So they are trying to identify how to take the IVA in the case of communications in different uh, ways. So it's a difficulty we are facing in the payments of credit cards and how to have a value associated to communications, let's say, different from transportation, because transportation does not pay taxes. These are things we are trying to solve, and we are working also trying to give technical support in this multi-sector uh, commission to define the best way to make decisions as a government on how to promote a digital transition, how to get to the digital issues as a country which are having such an important role in policies and in governmental policies and the economic development of the country. Which might be then the approach of this uh, regulation? I wear this slide uh, with some additions from the original one related to the experiences in the CDC, which, uh, which is the approach of the regulation. We are based in principles and purposes. We are trying to eliminate the traditional rules we used to have and change that regulation based on principles and to have some objective of what we are uh, to achieve in future. The principles might be clear, might be applicable, easy to be understood by the industry to have a, a juridical support, and this uh, legal safety might be uh, contemplated or include the possibility of being remunerated by the regulatory commissions. The second component of the regulation is a review from bottom to top from of the regulations existing in the different sectors, specifically in communication sector. Uh, we need to determine the need of those rules in future times. We need to know which are the tools 
to promote more investment, to give some freedom to market agents to do this uh, uh, digital services without any kind of obstacles. In Colombia, we have published a proposal of rules, certification composed by different elements. We are to eliminate uh, the obsolete revolution. We are eliminating everything that is not useful anymore. And we have to uh, say it with the industry, since we consider it's a work to be done jointly with industry to identify how to focus, how to face these regulations to promote the economic development of the country, the digital services, and the transformation of our sectors. The third element is a regulatory framework, dynamic one, and one of the main issues we identified in Colombia is that uh, regulation is going to be behind all the time, yes, of course, but we have to work on the offer of the digital services and the new platforms that are, create in the, are created in the industry are so fast that it's difficult to follow that step. This is implemented by tools given to us by OCD in the regulatory framework. There are some procedures established for issuing the regulation, and any time any standard is going to be issued, we analyze different rules, we analyze cost benefit, and we try to attain best benefit on the cost on the cost, uh, trying to attain more benefits for the economy and the population. And also, we are doing an evaluation of all these elements and the regulation should be fixed on time so that with this design we are to make a decision on the uh, regulation to be adopted. We design a mechanism for assessment and when to uh, keep or remove the uh, regulation or when to modify a regulation since this is contemplating a regulatory context of the ODC. We are to implement all these tools and regulations so we can update regulations. We have some conclusions as the political, public policies and regulation are to be flexible enough so that operators might generate new business models and generate incentives to make investment. We have debated this about one year ago or more. We analyzed the possibility of the industry needs to have some uh, development or uh, flexibility to have more development. And then policy makers should think on how to make our decisions be focused on this uh, security of the industry. And the last conclusion is the transfer, digital transformation of the technology and informatics uh, of means to understand the, need, the digital needs and the problems in a digital world. And we need to learn, not only from people in our sector, but we also need to learn from health, from transportation, from agriculture, so that as an industry we can provide some solutions to the needs from the private companies, from the companies in general, and so that the governments in those sectors are in line with the digitalization, transformation, and policies that should be transversal to the whole economy. Thank you very much. And then Herman Darío will take the floor. Bueno, hola de nuevo. Perdona primero la voz, pero soy el aire acondicionado creo que me está pasando factura. Este panel que vamos a tener a continuación Se trata de analizar cuál es la relación entre el mundo digital y los operadores de telecomunicaciones. Para el gusto de la CRC, para nuestro gusto, es una relación simbiótica antes que de confrontación. Entonces, por eso queremos en este panel tener gente de ese mundo, de ese mundo digital, reguladores e incluso la visión de gremio. Por esta razón, quiero invitar al panel a las siguientes personas. 
Eh, en primer lugar, bueno, no presenté a los que no me conocen, soy Germán Darío Arias, director ejecutivo de la Comisión de Regulación de Comunicaciones y experto comisionado. Muy bien, tenemos a Daniel Pataki, vicepresidente de Política y Regulación de GSMA, que no lo veo, se me perdió. Ah, aquí está, por favor, Daniel. Please, go ahead. Verena Weber, analista de política y regulación. Policy, eh, regulation. Adolfo Cuevas. Adolfo Cuevas. Communication from Mexico. And we have uh, Servinito, responsible for connectivity in Latin America. As you see, I think we can have a good discussion here. Okay. In the first place, I should like to make a general question. A general question to all. And then we'll make questions to each of them. First, we have the following questions. Which are the new developments and trends of the business model uh, contributed by the digital economy, which are the implications and how the public policy and regulating policy of communication is carried out. Before you answer, I remember that I remind you that we have a page to make questions. I have it in my table. The page is like point two. So I uh, make the questions and then I give those questions to the corresponding people. We now have a question. I, it's a question about Colombia, so I think it will be me. Like Guillén from CETEL, he's saying the municipalities are, are connected to uh, Broadband. Uh, in Colombia, the average speed is six megabits per second. I think it is very low. The Regulating Commission has just changed the definition of broadband applied by 1990. It will be 25 down and five up. Uh, some people say it is very good, but then what happens? The thing is that the definition of broadband promotes the uh, the offers of operators to increase. We want the offers of the operators. If it is broadband, it should have 25 megawatts. Otherwise, you may call it otherwise, but not broadband. Now, let's begin first with Daniel. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm really happy to be here again. Um, just to, to be short, so so my answer to the question. So the first question is about what are the changes we think are the most important. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, I, I see two, which is basically one, which some people describe as the new industrial revolution. And this has two sides. One is technological change, so which will, you know, everything will be connected all the time. And the second one is the data, so data will be even more available. So there will be, you know, even business models we cannot imagine. So there's a new world coming uh, with all these changes. What is the um, implication for policy? I have to say I, I brutally agree what has been presented by, by Colombia. We, had, we made the study in, with GSMA uh, around three years ago, and the main, what we said about if you know the future is coming, you know, then regulation has to be rethinked. And how you should rethink regulation? I always say that regulation is more an art than a science, and it will become more and more because from one time, from one side, you have to be uh, flexible because the future, nobody can predict the future. However, whenever you ask any operators what they expect from regulation, they will always say, I want to have predictability. Even if regulation is bad for me, I need to know what's going to happen for my business model. So how you can have regulation one time flexible, but also predictable, and this is what you presented as well. We also think that you know, 
if you have a principle-based regulation, that would help. That's number one. The second one, you mentioned bottom-up, and that means that you know, regulation should forget a bit about the legacy, because this world is going to be very different. And also dynamic regulation, but I think principle-based regulation means that you can adapt to the future, however it's still predictable. And maybe two other things. Um, since the last three years, one, I think it's important to have strong institutions, because if you have good rules, then you have to trust those institutions that they will apply those rules. And the other one, maybe three, the second one, as you mentioned, Herman, yesterday as well, that regulators or government should not think about silos anymore. So it should be, it's convergence, so it has to be horizontal regulation and also fair to all the players. And last but not least, regulation, if it's possible, can be make the operators accountable and make them more responsible. So less the regulator being a policeman, but more like, you know, enabling the whole environment. That's it from me. Thank you, and thank you very much for having me here this morning. Good morning, everyone. So at the OECD, um, we're currently looking at um, different groups in the industry. So, and I'll give you some examples. So one group we're looking at is obviously the traditional vertically integrated um, telecommunication operators, both fixed and mobile. So there we see a couple of things. So one, uh, we see they're finding quite innovative ways to bring costs down. So let me give you an example. Um, in Finland, there is an operator called Elisa. Elisa is offering unlimited data plans. So you can imagine the data growth they have to support went like this, exponential growth. Um, and at the same time, I mean, you know, um, they're a publicly listed company, so they have to stay profitable. So what they did is um, a lot of their network is actually fully automated. So they do network optimization all the time. And um, they, they were so successful internally that they are now selling the same service to their competitors. So that's an interesting from this group. Then um, on the other side, this group is um, expanding and offering other services along the value chain. And I think we will get you that uh, in, in a couple of minutes. Then the second group, we looked at our cable operators. So we see that cable operators are constantly upgrading their network to the, to the newest cable standards um, in order to really compete with the telecommunication providers. Um, they face competition from over-the-top services, so um, they have quite some culture, like their own culture when it comes to providing programming services, etc. So they, try, and they launch now their own video platforms to better compete um, with OTT, so that's the second group we looked at. Um, the third group are internet companies, and we looked at what are they doing when it comes to connectivity, and what we saw is that actually these companies, and we heard it from Bob um, this week, is that they're massively deploying infrastructure as well. So Google, um, for instance, has participation in at least um, 12 submarine cables. Um, they are developing their own fiber backbones to connect their data centers better. So they compete basically to some extent on the infrastructure side with some of the traditional operators. And then finally, a growing segment that we're seeing is wholesale companies and very different models. So for instance, um, we see um, two purely wholesale wireless networks, um, the one that is currently built up in Mexico, the Red Compartida, and um, one in Rwanda. We see um, a growth in tower companies. So um, we have more and more tower companies that are providing services to mobile operators. So traditional operators um, sold their tower business. Um, new players also came in. So this is quite a dynamic market. Then we see um, utilities providing wholesale services. So we have a lot of energy providers in Europe that are providing um, fiber services to the end consumers. Um, we see the model of stock up in Sweden. Um, where municipalities roll out um, an entire fiber network where other companies come and connect. So these are the trends we're seeing in the industry. Thank you. Good morning to all of you. 
Uh, it's good to share this down. In the past sessions, we explained the quantitative and qualitative virtues about the digital era. I think the main challenges we face in the public service uh, it's the in re regulatory environment. It's a new type of leadership. Uh, it was not the case of Mexico, though, because we carried out a great reform which transformed the situation of the sector in my country. But leadership is important of anyone exerting public activity. We, as regulators, enterprises that have that type of leadership, I think we have to understand and make possible all that which allows for the digital economy to do for the benefit of society. And we must do away with barriers that interpose enterprise, better reality, and vices, the preconceived ideas and reminiscences which we maintain in this sector, part authorities and business people. I think we have to deal with that transformation. Uh, from the uptick of a regulator, for instance, my vision is that I must support my investment in an environment of competition. One without one thing and the other, there wouldn't be a positive result. Furthermore, I must conceive and understand the new objective which is being uh, prepared to move from the present definitions that live in the development of digital economy that makes necessary to activate through expressions like digital economy, digital finances, or telehealth, teleeducation, to do away with those barriers so that in the new environment we simply talk about finances, education, health, anything implicitly, explicitly digital, and that leadership and which I think has to do with transforming our societies. And that is what we're doing. We're not simply adjusting models. We're transforming our societies. And it entails, well, I am a lawyer. I was trained in law. For me, that means to begin changing our legal framework. What the digital economy does and the companies and operators internet service, what they're doing should have no barriers. We have to transform our laws so that the laws will respond to that new need and will constitute an open road for transformation which we require that those laws should not simply allow things to happen in the digital in the digital environment they have to assume that it will happen and then how to do with it the barriers are to be destroyed inside of the countries for recently recently I've heard a lot about the problems in the municipalities for the deployment of structures but it should also be done in the super regional level we must see how we integrate our southern region continents in the world but for that our regions we need what we can do together which common environment we have rules which we can have to have an open field for investments and for companies to serve our countries and be prosperous i think this assumes that today internet uh, companies are not only an actor that serves some of the digital environment basically developed by operators but they are rather a fundamental ingredient of the same approach which are already contributing as they were doing a while ago so we must also promote full inclusion their full inclusion as has been said but before too, it should be a ground on which they will have a mother regulating framework that will mean that flexibility that we have been speaking about, regulatory prudence that will intervene for the public interest. That is the vision we have in this first moment. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you, first of all, thank you for the invitation. 
and be able to talk to you. I should like to go a little bit behind just to remember some uh, instances of the past, which are the main development of business models that emerge with digital economy. What we are seeing is a transformation important, but if we look at the root of the problem, we're basically talking about the same services, the same demand of society, which is primary to communicate transportation, information, etc. And what uh, technology is doing, as we say, economists say, transaction issues to come closer to the possibility to have access to services of transformation and so forth, to make them cheaper, to have them closer, bring it closer to the people. And it is no different to speak about this ecosystem which we are creating to what happened perhaps in the case of Mexico 20 some years ago when the into the competence in telecommunication appeared, and we saw uh, those establish how the new ones were going into the market. The same with mobile equipment. Today, we're talking about how internet companies compete or substitute services of telecommunication when really what we do all is create and be part of a great ecosystem where we are, yes, competing, rivalry, a healthy rivalry for the market, a competence that has generated innovations which we are enjoying. I think that many of the important services at present emerge in some place of the United States, Europe, and some here in our continent. But other important business ideas emerge in the cooperatives of telecommunication companies. There isn't a barrier, a natural barrier, that will tell us that the telecommunication companies cannot participate in the market of internet and vice versa. Today we have participants in both ways. So what are we creating? Well, we're not uh, rediscovering our competence or rivalry between technology sectors, not even between types of services. We are really, as has been remarked by you, we're seeing a convergent situation. We're not talking about a new ecosystem where we can all participate and can participate on one and the other side of the market. On the one hand, telecommunication companies have offers Otepes no telcos do not make it, but we, as internet enterprises, invest in infrastructure, participate in projects of connectivity, and that is not done by tech, nor we stop being internet companies. We are an ecosystem which is being created, generating innovation benefits for the customers. Well, the regulations come in in this case. That is an important part you mentioned in the presentation, and it is fundamental for those that have been regulators and for those who are in that field of work. To regulate, we need to have a clear objective. You don't do it just for the sake of it. It's something which we must accomplish. And in this case, that objective must respond to the implications that generates this new ecosystem. So that should be the regulations. Which are the implications? There could be competence that have nothing to do with the rivalry between the two parties of the ecosystem, simple uh, natural things of the market. There must be issues of promotion, as is the case of the spectrum. We will need spectrum and as societies to be able to have access to any of these services. We need to push greater activity in our countries, as has been said these days. And I think in those uh, goals, if we define those as objectives and others that which are to the dimension, regulating actions should be aimed at accomplishing those objectives. So the, the statement, we are generating this great ecosystem, which has regulating implications that must be looked after, but with clear objectives in mind. What do we want? How 
we're going to build it, what do we want to make it out of it in the near future? Thank you. I will entertain some of the questions. I'd like to discuss about the, the structure of the countries to deal with the regulations. This happens in Colombia and everywhere. Communication regulators are seen pressure by other actors, but that regulator have no competence to regulate nothing different from telecommunications. As the case of Colombia, the commission can only regulate telecommunications. However, services of video is pushing telecommunication services. Yet those regulating charges are different and that is recognized by all. Attack taxes are charged as a contribution for the sector, but the one in internet, which are the audiovisual services, because no other one has those burdens, and the regulator cannot even deal with that because they don't have the competence to do it. I'd like to hear from you briefly, which is your vision of state, how the state should be organized in order to approach the digital economy, not how to intervene, no, that is not what I want, but it is deregulate, to have an interventionist vision which should be that vision, which should be that state structure to be able to use the benefits of digital economy. Thank you very much. Sorry to take the microphone. Muchas gracias. Um, I think it's, it's a very good question. What, and I have a personal view because I was a regulator myself and I was involved in, uh, in the last review in European regulations when I was the head of European regulators and I was so much into discussing how the new regulatory setup should look like. However, as, as a caveat, I should say that what we believe and I believe personally from the industry side, we can have a view, but what, what, our, our, what we believe in is what is important, as, as my colleague said there, that have clear goals for the regulation have a regulatory framework which is flexible, we discussed what should be you know, principle-based and so on, and how the, the institutional setup should look like. We, we are humble as operators and we say, you know, policy makers, politicians know the best, what is the best setup. We, however, so I, could, I should say, you know, GSMA was promoting in Latin America for sure the convergence regulator. So, you know, we thought that that here in these circumstances and in Colombia in particular could be good to have you know a regulator which oversees all these areas in order to to act and have a horizontal view but in general we think you know it's up to you know political or, or regional circumstances what should be the setup I, I pass the microphone but I would like to react to some of the things which has been said when when I have the opportunity thank you So it's actually a hard question, and um, the way we address it at the OECD, we came up with a horizontal project that will take two years, and you know, basically to try, and this is one of the main questions we have, how should the institutional framework look like? So we have basically all of our member countries that are thinking, um, okay, we see that the, you know, there's digitalization of the entire economy and society across all sectors, so not only in the communication area, but you know, when you think of transport, uh, you, you have transport services, so who should be responsible? Is it a transport ministry? Is it the ICT ministry, etc.? So um, just to say, like, a lot of our countries are actually trying to, to assess the institutional framework and see how they go forward. So some of the countries have created a unit in the presidential office in, in order to, to have a coordinated approach. Um, some others, um, determined that there is one ministry uh, that should take the lead but coordinate all the other ministries. So we see different models. Now, um, on the communication side, what we see is there is a clear trend towards converged regulators. I think we are now about 14 countries uh, that have converged regulators. And we also see 
um, that the regulators um, are rethinking their roles. Um, so maybe just two examples. Um, RCEP just launched a pretty extensive tool to measure um, different aspects of net neutrality. Um, they, they are having um, a pretty important work stream on the Internet of Things. And while we're meeting here, um, BAREC, and this is the association of all the European regulators, is meeting in Poland um, to rethink um, how they should approach the data economy, so what their role should be in a data-driven economy. Gracias. Creo que es un tema Thank you. I think it is... Uh, uh, which tool do we need for that objective? The objective to obtain the consolidation supposes to have tools authority efficient. There is an impression, but it could be a bias because of the recent issue in Mexico, a converging organ we have in Mexico. For me, it will be a mistake to retain the regulating uh, organ that I mean it would not be good if it becomes the general one because we need the knowledge and expertise of other sectors and that is already developed through the regulations in financial matters and so forth so that order of ideas I think convergence supports to obtain objectives for investment and competition an authority consolidated on these topics of telecommunications, as was the case of Mexico, economic competition, and a, a, a horizontal policy that will do away with barriers in all the other sectors, with the notable reference that we require this to be solved from the Congress, because sometimes the barriers are in obsolete uh, laws and prevent the potential to be developed simply because there is it's a law that says the same for 40 years, 60 years, how things should be done. For instance, that they should be in paper, that the notary is the only one to report and to do the same. And the high costs which are involved, that type of thing. Efficiency, knowledge, and so forth. That is a complex question. I go back to something what Adolfo said. I think the case of the Mexican regulator has been successful. And of course, it represents the need of Mexico at that moment. But then what happened in Mexico? Uh, a convergent regulator joined the broadcasting part and telecom. And it was very relevant in Mexico to be with telecom because the topics for many reasons were different from those of the rest of the economy. And it worked well. It worked well down for the case of Mexico. What happens in other countries? Well, necessarily, we'll have to go back to the reference. It's a subject of objectives. What do we need to do? And to put aside a bit the regulations we're talking about, which is the economic regulation. I think we cannot see as yet, and that at present there are other regulators, which is likewise important, the topic of security, privacy, of course, but probably, and this is a thinking that comes to my mind, the, the vision of efficiency, government, institutional efficiency. We don't really want an institution that will have everything all. It should be one that will concentrate the topic of the digital economy. The digital economy is the economy in itself. It's the economy uh, taken to the digital world of the intervention of states in the economy should be in another scenario, but it should not be the same. It's, it's the way, it's the, the way in which we do it is different. The case in Colombia is simple. They have tried to regulate over the form of transport with no success. For us, what did this meant when they're trying to rule with the world, uh, with the laws of the world, uh, the physical world, a virtual, virtual world? It's the European approach. 
the platform and uh, the supply and service, which is the, really, the real service provided, is a service expressed in the physical world. That is the one that should be ruled and not the platform. OK, we have questions from the audience. One for Lester. Lester, I'm not really inventing the question. Lucrecia Corvalances. One no Lester. The regulation should not be based on equalitarian treaty, although there are similar conditions. Why to continue with asymmetric conditions? Would the ecosystem move forward? It's not my question. It's the audience that are asking these questions. Well, um, as the principle says, the thing is trying to try the equals in the same way. The subject of regulations, well, that symmetries exist between the size of the operators by declarations of domain in our country and so forth. That needs speaks about the needs of apply asymmetric resolutions. I think the topic is to regulate differently those which I call members are part of the ecosystems, which are the internet company and the telcos. Simply, they're different because they are in a different scheme and they have different implications. Um, why do we regulate telecommunications? Because it is a service which was identified as public and has social impacts which are to be taken into account. In the case of Mexico, the competence is, is has to be regulated. That is why we must do it asymmetrically. If there are regulating implications of other services, uh, we would have to think whether it is necessary to regulate or not, but on the basis of objectives. I want to answer the question without a bias, but rather in a better analytic manner. It is not to regulate just for the sake of it, but whenever there is something to be solved. In the history of telecommunications, of the industry of telecommunication, there were objectives to be solved. The spectrum is so good of the nation, of all the countries, it is a scare. Uh, property, and it must be ruled how it is used. Internet works on those network. They have a correspondent, but that spectrum was not to exploit it. A regulation of that type will not be applicable. Also, the granting of a recognition by the state that they can provide a public uh, good, uh, something for the nation, something good for the nation identified as though the state rules. If those are different realities, well, obviously the regulations are different. In this ecosystem we're talking about, we're at the end. The border will be lost, well, perhaps, as you said, and it has been discussed, it is regulation but not more for ones and to, to, to bring them even. <coughs> Artificially even. We have a free market. If there are no worries of a certain type, there shouldn't be regulations of a certain type. And at the end, this is all about. We have 20 minutes. I'll make one. ¿Qué programa de industria se encuentra desarrollando la GSMA para orientar a sus agremiados frente a las transformaciones requeridas para afrontar los cambios traídos por la economía digital y la industria? Thank you. Uh, I didn't get the translation, but I, I think it's a special question for GSMA. But if, if you let me, I would just... Uh, go a bit different than the script and, and, uh, and have a few comments what has been said. So maybe we can have even the 20 minutes a discussion here. So, so one thing on, on your question that reminded me what Verena was saying, I think it's important on 
because we, leave, we left it a little bit open about the structure. I think the most important from my experience, as what you said, is as this is, as you said as well, this is less about a communication issue, it's more about, you know, a country issue. So the most important thing where we've seen that countries were successful is there was a champion, right? And the champion of a digital change, the better if it's the higher, if it's the prime minister of the president. So that was the number one. And whether, you know, then it's somebody sitting there with him or with her there, it's, it's another issue. And the, the second one, concretely for the, for the regulators, what, what I, I didn't say, I should have said it, that the importance is not only what is the remit, but also that the regulator should be strong. The strong meaning by, and I know it's difficult in many of these countries for sure, is all about resources. So if you are well resourced, you can have you know the good people, then you'll be you know you'll be high chances you'll be successful. The second thing what I uh, wanted to react on was uh, also still Verena. Uh, you gave a very good perspective of what's going on, and um, and Anisa CEO is one of my you know heroes. You know he's he's one of the most successful guys. But you also mentioned, I think it's important to say this is personal and GSMA view about the uh, wholesale mobile networks or the wholesale only networks. I truly believe and we believe in GSMA that the examples around the world, there's one in Mexico, but there's in Australia as well, doesn't really show the success that this is you know, a success story based on timing or based on the money or the cost benefit of, of, of this realization. I think it's important. And, and last but not least, uh, on the question from the, from the floor, uh, we believe that, you know, what, what Lester was saying, if, if we think that there is this whole ecosystem and, you know, everything will be connected, then we think that horizontal rules should be applied. And then if there's the same service, then same rules will apply. It doesn't mean for Lester that, you know, everything should be regulated. It's, it, mean, it might mean that something will be de deregulated but then the same service should be uh, done by, uh, by the same rules. So I will skip. I can come back if we have time for the GSME question. Thank you, Daniel. Ahora para, para Verena. My question for Verena. Regulatory models have had problems uh, to maintain the pace of a convergent uh, system. In your view, what are the main evolutions required in regulatory policies in Latin America to make the best use of the potentials of digital economy in our region? Thank you. And if you allow, I will just quickly react um, to the wholesale networks. Um, so, um, uh, indeed, we see, I mean, Australia has some issues which are also linked to the fact that with every government change, they kind of change the model a bit, what they were planning to do. Um, so, there, as, I, as I mentioned, there are a lot of very different models. So, um, you mentioned the Australian one. Um, there, there is the Singaporean one, which is a very particular case, obviously, but this is a model that works very well. Um, I mentioned the Stock Hub example, um, the municipal fiber, which is a success story. It's one of the most um, successful cases we have. Uh, the Red Converted, I mean, they're just deploying it, so we will, we will see um, whether it's successful or not. So. Um, what I would say here is, I mean, there are a lot of different models and, you know, um, we, we look at them case by case and see, and so we do see some that are obviously less successful, the one you mentioned, but we also see some that are quite successful. Um, now, um, getting back to the question, um, what is important for us, um, for the regulatory environment is first that the regulators are well equipped, um, that they're able to perform a technical analysis of the market. Uh, and base their decision on sound evidence. So for us, this is key. And the second important point is um, the regulators should be independent from political decisions, from day-to-day -day political decisions. So this is key um, to, to have an efficient regulator. And third, as we were discussing, I mean, the environment is getting more and more complex. So you need very complementary skill sets. So at the regulator, you need people that come from different backgrounds and you know, have the right skills. Um, to, to do more and more complex analysis, right? So that, that's my first big point. Um, the second, we already talked about it, so um, we have a convergent environment, so we see um, that a lot of regulators converge, so I won't repeat that. And a third point, um, for us it's key that we have a regulatory environment, especially in, Amer in Latin America, that fosters competition, 
So this is key. We see that in markets um, where there's a high level of competition, there's a high level of investment, there's a high level of innovation in the market, and consumers benefit from that. Um, in addition, we think um, that you know the different players um, should be able to enter the different markets. So we think you know that, for instance, broadcasters um, should be able to enter the telecommunication market. Telecommunications should be able to enter the broadcasting market. The same is true for internet companies entering the telco market, and and vice versa. So I would say these are my main points. Gracias, Verena. Llegó una pregunta muy interesante. Thank you, Verena. There is a very interesting question here. See who will answer it. Tania Velasque asks if we would identify uh, development goals to be regulated, how would we have a national regulation on transboundary internet companies? Who wants to answer this, this question? Well, actually, this is a much debated uh, subject, but it's not so complicated. What we need to have in mind is the reason for a regulatory action that in most cases could derive from uh, action by the Congress empowering the different authorities. And this is happening because uh, there are issues of public interest that are motivating this type of intervention, protection to minors, the issue of privacy, the cybersecurity issue, the uh, taxes uh, uh, system. I think uh, this that we need to understand, disseminate, make the state authorities, the Congress, the executive understand what the digital economy and and how we must intervene only when it is necessary because any excess will not bring about the benefits of protecting the public interest but will hinder the advance and progress of digital economies in the different countries. I think uh, this is a topic that is being uh, mythified. And uh, I think that uh, certain internet companies uh, are compelled to get a license, to have an office, and all that. Legally, it is simple, but not because it is simple, it has to be done. We have to be very prudent in that type of actions. I think this is a very delicate issue when we discuss in the different countries uh, the regulation, we see that we don't have the necessary weapons for a global approach. Uh, I think that we are talking about re regional regulation here, not national regulations. Well, we have other questions for Facebook. Daniel Barcas, Frank Quintero, Lucrecia Corbalán, Marcos, Elber are asking questions for Facebook, but I'm not going to make them now because uh, they're not important right now. Now, my question for Lester. What is the vision of your organization to achieve con universal connectivity in Latin America? How can online platforms contribute to attain this goal or objective? Well, first of all, if there are questions for Facebook and we don't have enough time, I can talk with anybody who would like to approach me. Now, I believe that uh, the work uh, we need to do to achieve these connectivity goals are very is very clear. And we have been working on that. I think in these ecosystems, uh, there is a um, significant complementarity between the services provided by telecommunications traditional companies and what is provided by internet. I think uh, that uh, we can ask ourselves if these are perfect uh, replacements or substitutes so that we they could be in the uh, same horizontal regulatory scheme. 
I think we are we complement each other so much so that we have found very interesting formulas of cooperation with telcos to advance uh, these connectivity projects. What uh, does Facebook, Facebook do? Well, as a technological company, we generate uh, technological development. There are very important technological developments uh, achieved by Facebook, not only for our network. It has been possible and convenient uh, to share and expand the scope of this technology because it allows us to reduce costs something that is fundamental and necessary if we want to talk about connectivity projects. In this complementarity we are talking about with uh, op telecommunication operators in Barcelona, we announced an agreement to work together with Telefonica in the case of Peru and maybe in other places so that by using that technology and using their network and their expertise and their scope, we can have rural connectivity at low cost. I think it is important for regulators present here that one of the reasons we chose Peru is because Peru has a very interesting and relevant regulatory system or a tool, a mobile rural mobile infrastructure, and this allows the involvement of different economic agents in the same business stream. And this is a creative idea by Peru, and talking about regulations and its adaptation, it's not that we need that in all countries, but we can have interesting formulas in Mexico. We have the shared network. Argentina has a, a register to share infrastructure, which could be an interesting idea. There are many schemes, and we are working on that. We are working on technological develop developments that enable us to reduce costs and make uh, uh, services more affordable. We also work uh, with uh, telcos, that is, telecommunication operators, and uh, we need to have a regulatory vision that will allow us to use uh, these tools and to have the necessary resources available, so spectrum, licenses, etc. And I think this is a way to move forward. This is one of the programs in other continents. We have been working on urban Wi-Fi urban networks, connectivity in suburban areas through a technology that uh, allows to have better speed in wireless uh, connections. So there are spillovers for the efficiency of our networks that can be used so that we can reach more people and expand connectivity. That is our will. We want to do this and we have signed agreements with our friends in Telefonica and we hope this will have very important results. Thank you, Lester. Now I have a question for Commissioner Webster. What, uh, uh, what is the, the action for, uh, what specific programs is IFT developing for this purpose? Well, as I said, we need to have investment in an within the competition that is a basic and permanent objective. I think that moving from uh, upwards, this is something that the digital economy requires. This means that we must support a revision of the regulatory schemes for operators to simplify it. Our vision is not to see what we have to impose to Internet companies, but see what we have to 
simplify in the case of operators. Uh, there will be a consultation on hundreds of processes by the industry. We are trying to simplify all this so that we can uh, have a model of digital relationship. This is a small step, and there is a lot of regulations that we cannot do away with because it depends on the Congress. But uh, there will be a change of government in Mexico soon, and I think we will be able to start this type of dialogue. I think we have all mentioned this. Uh, the problem here is uh, not to dissolve digital activity in, uh, or not to think about digital activity as any other uh, activity in society. The uh, set of norms and institutions of a state and the mechanisms of international and regional cooperation serve the purpose of uh, promoting digital mechanisms or digital structures so that uh, any service, any human activity can use uh, this. Our main objective is to live in an open society without dogmas, with values and principles, checking them constantly, and that should be our priority as regulators. We must be open to transformation at all times. Thank you, Commissioner. We still have five minutes left. Uh, I wish each and every one of you to give us a f final message. What will be the essential message both for the operator and uh, the Internet uh, companies. I'll give one minute to each. Daniel, you begin. Um, thanks a lot. Um, I wish I would be the last. Um, so, so the, on the final comments, I think what um, I would just reiterate what what has been said. I think it's it's very important to be. Uh, to be clear about the regulatory goals and, and what should be the principles and I think you know Latin America as a region is really on the right track on this there was a question before we haven't touched I would like to touch upon in that one minute is basically what what should be the focus points of policy we think that you know all is important all the aspects but mainly I think for LATAM is um, is coverage and then uh, and then regional consistency or cooperation and as I said before or many of my colleagues on the panels we in GSMA we would really like to support you as before on this and help you with this journey thank you so the slogan of the OECD is um, better policies for better lives so we want um, from both the operator side and the internet companies um, that we achieve better lives um, from our communication perspective this means um, um, high quality communication services to be able to connect people, to be able to connect businesses at um, competitive affordable prices. And what we wish is that we see a market uh, where the, all the companies can compete with each other, um, driving a lot of innovation for the digital economy. Bueno, en realidad, eh, supera la dicotomía. We must overcome the dichotomy. We should not see ourselves as different parties, but as components, interdependent components of the same system, of a live body, of the society we are developing and creating. So we need a, a regulation. The regulation required, we do not need excesses. We need, we cannot hurry on this. We need an open dialogue with the industry so that uh, we can get the best results for our society, which means equality. Thank you. Well, I think the Commissioner said everything I wanted to say. I think uh, that uh, the issue here is to understand that we are an ecosystem. We are competitors, like the fixed and mobile services were at a time. 
and as everybody is in a market, that means rivalry, that means that we will be seeking uh, or trying to get the same clients. But we are also complementary services, and I think that is important that we share all this. Together we can do more for societies and do more business. I think regulators or regulation must be based on objectives and should facilitate the market. It should generate competition because competition generates innovation. Thank you. With this, we conclude the panel. It's 11 sharp. Thank you. We thank the members of the panel. We congratulate them because you have made a great contribution. And thank you all. I think we have to take a photo now.